Joe, 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 why are you such a beat off? Come on, man. I woke up this morning. I get my news flash. And it tells me that Joe Biden wants us to start wearing masks for 100 days, starting with his inauguration. And I thought, what? He's got to be kidding. Did he really say that? Was he taken out of context? So I looked, found the story, and that's what he said. And I'm like, Joe, by the time of your inauguration, I've been wearing a mask for 300 days. I was wearing a mask during the initial wave. I wore a mask through the second wave. Now I'm wearing a mask in the third wave. If masks were the answer, there'd be no third wave. There wouldn't have been a second wave. If lockdowns were their answer, were the answer, there wouldn't have been a second wave. We definitely wouldn't be in a third wave. That's not science. That's anti-science. That's bogus science. It's BS science. Let's get real, Joe. As you like to say, come on, man. And then I got angrier. I found two other stories. Two gems. One is this video published, posted by this woman out in uh, L.A. County. And she has outdoor dining at a restaurant, which has been shut down because outdoor dining is dangerous. You allow outdoor dining in your establishment, you're going to kill people. You're responsible for killing people. And in the parking lot near her area where her restaurant is, there's this big tenant area set up by a movie company, which is shooting a film. And they're exempt. So they have outdoor dining facilities for the people on set. And they're at picnic tables, which means they're sitting next to each other. I mean, there's not even, uh, you know, social distancing. And, and as, how is that science? If you eat over here for, in a movie company outfit, set up. It's not dangerous. But if you eat, you know, what is, I don't know, a couple hundred feet away at a restaurant, it's dangerous and you're going to die? This is moronic. This isn't science. This is moronic politics. And then another story I saw. This one's even, I, I don't know what to call it. They're resuming Sports in Ohio. Good news. Wrestling. A wrestling. Picture how people look when they're wrestling, what they're doing. They're allowed to wrestle. But before they wrestle, when they're sitting off on the sides waiting for the match, they have to follow social distancing and wear a mask. But then after social distancing and wearing a mask, they can go out and grapple and wrestle with their opponent until the match is over and decide it. But this, this is the, this, this is the tell me about the science crap thing. They can wrestle. They can grab one another. They can roll around with one another on the mat. They can do all kinds of holds and do all the things you do with wrestling. But before and after the match, they're not allowed to shake hands. That's dangerous. Shaking hands with a guy that you're going to roll around on the mat with for minutes is dangerous, but rolling around on the mat with him, breathing on him and being breathed on by him, that's not dangerous. This is science. This isn't science. This is BS public policy. Science as interpreted by moronic political leaders. It's that simple. It, this is not science. The old English poet, you know, John Donne, for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee, that guy. He wrote a sonnet, and it begins, I forget the exact words, but it's something to the effect that reason is the, is the soul's left hand, faith is its right. And, and, I remember the first time I read that, it stuck with me. And it always has. It's been you know, decades now. I've, I've used it, books I've written and things like that, because I think it gets 
to the crux of the matter here. Life isn't just about science. It's not just about reason. Reason won't, can't tell you everything. It's not going to tell you why we're here. You know, it, it, it can't explain a lot of things that happen in life other than to say, well, you know, it's just, just the odds and you know, this and that. There's more to life than reason. There's faith. Now, faith can take, I'm not pushing a particular faith. I'm not saying everybody should be a Christian, everybody should be a Muslim, everybody should be a Buddhist. Faith can take many forms. You can have faith in socialism. You can have faith in communism. You could have faith in Nazism. You can have faith in the reason, capabilities, and intelligence of your fellow human being. That's the greatest form of diversity, is to trust the people. Trust the people to make decisions and not tell them what they need to do. There's no way you can shape a public policy to deal with COVID-19 that's not going to have these obviously stupid inconsistencies in them. You can't do it. It's the nature of broad-based public policy. There are always exceptions. There are always places and times and instances where you're going to end up looking like a moron if you push these things. That's why you have to trust the people. Let me give, give, give you a simple example. You know, you have a little fire extinguisher in your kitchen, hopefully. I have one. It will extinguish flames. That's the science. It's been proven. It's got a little seal on it. It says, you know, uh, UL Labs, blah, 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 blah. You get a kitchen fire in your stove. You grab your fire extinguisher, you put it out, it works. That's science. They told you the thing would work, it did. Meanwhile, you walk out the side and your neighbor's house is on fire. But if I run over to my neighbor's house with my little fire extinguisher, I can't put it out. The science says this extinguishes fire, but not going to extinguish that fire. That's not a question of science. You need science and you need reason. Like John Donne said, you know, reason is the soul's left hand, faith is its right. You have to understand these things. I mean, there are things we could give to people suffering from cancer that would immediately kill the cancer cells. The problem is it would kill most of the other cells in their bodies, especially the more vulnerable organs. That's why they have to control the dose or give them a very low dose. They know what would kill the cancer cells. The problem is, how do you do it without killing the person? And in many ways, that's science. Understanding that just because something works doesn't mean you can use it. And that's the problem with COVID-19. I'm sure if we could just lock the entire planet down, put everybody in a hazmat suit, and keep them there for six months, we beat this thing. That's science. But you can't do that. It's the reason salt thing again. If you did that, there'd be nothing left. Who would be growing the food for those six months? And once you start making exceptions to the rules, then you end up in the parking lot in LA where, you know, over here you can operate and over here you can't. It doesn't make any sense. I live in Florida. We operated under many phases and stages of, of lockdowns and mask wearing and all. I was wearing a mask before we had to wear masks. If they tell me we don't need to wear masks next week, I'd probably keep wearing one for a while. I can make my own judgment. I can use my own brain. When COVID first started hitting, I started wearing a mask. I just recently had a kidney transplant. I'm on all these drugs that suppress my immune system. I was concerned. So they advised us as patients, you go around, you should wear a mask. So I did. We weren't mandated to wear a mask at that point. I was wearing them before the politicians started telling us to wear masks. There was a brief time we didn't have to wear them. And I wore them anyway. I mean, they, they can say what they want, but I think I'm a better judge of my own situation 
and whether or not I should or shouldn't or need to or don't need to wear a mask. I can make those decisions on my own. That's what you should do in a free country. You make your own decisions. They give you the information, you make your own decisions. I mean, I can do math. I know what statistics look like sufficiently enough to figure out what the percentage of me dying is. I mean, to catch it and die in Florida, it's, you know, 0. 0.0000. I don't know what the number is today. It was four the last time I checked. It might, maybe it's a little higher, maybe it's a little lower. I don't know. But it's still tiny. When I go out to eat, and my wife and I, we do go out at least once a week, sometimes a little more, sometimes we'll miss a week. And we wear our masks. We also go out early. We'll go, I mean, I remember when they first released, you know, the restrictions on dining, indoor dining. It's a place we'd wanted to go for a while. We'd been to before up in Wesley Chapel. We got there. We were the first people there on the first day open. I think I opened at 11, and we were there. It was us and the serving staff, and then gradually other people came in. We go at that time because there's fewer people. So if there's fewer people there than there would be at, say, 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, statistically, I would suggest that that means there's less chance of you catching COVID-19 while you're sitting there with your mask off while you're dining. Who suffers from these COVID-19 lockdowns? Amazon? The big corporations? I know some of the restaurant chains have taken a hit. Some are headed for bankruptcy. But the big major corporations, Silicon Valley, they're not hurting. More people. I mean, YouTube's like through the roof. Everybody's home, sitting home, making YouTube videos, myself included. People spend more time on Facebook, more time on Twitter because they're at home. Netflix, you know, they're More people are watching Netflix and the other streaming services. It may vary from one to one to the other. All these people are benefiting from COVID-19. The small companies, the small businesses, they're the ones suffering. Like that woman, you know, with the outdoor dining in the parking lot across from the movie industry. The movie industry is exempted. Her small business, sorry, lady, you're going to go out of business. You're going to go bankrupt. You're going to lose your dreams, everything you've invested, all the work you've put into it. It's all going to go down the drain. Because people who make the decisions never suffer themselves. Governor Newsom of California, is he not getting paid? I mean, I'm a military historian. You know, you talk about leadership. You know, that's a big role in the military. You know, successful leaders, the good leaders, the ones who inspire people. You know, they don't ask people to do what they're not doing themselves. You know, the word leader implies leading to be in front of. You don't lead from behind. That's not leadership by definition. To lead, you have to be in front. You know, when when I was a department chair, if we needed to cut back the budget and we were going to travel less, I made sure... I traveled the least. There were years I didn't move anywhere. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't spend a penny. And I didn't do that because I didn't want to go anywhere. I did. But I knew everybody else was suffering. And I wanted to make make sure they understood that I was suffering. And the best way to do that would be never to be gone. Because if you're never gone, then you're not spending their money, the department's money. You know, that's leadership. You lead from the front. You lead by example. I've yet to see a politician saying, I'm shutting things down. You're all going to lose your businesses. You're all going to lose your jobs. But I feel your pain because until the lockdown's over, I'm not taking a salary. My staff won't take a salary. They're all going to keep working or go home. They're not going to get paid. Nobody's going to help them out. You know, all the state workers are going to not get paid because, you know, we feel your pain. It's never those people who suffer. It's always the little people who suffer. It's never Amazon that suffers. It's the little store that suffers. It's never, you know, Lowe's or or Home Depot that suffers. It's the little tiny hardware store that suffers because they're the ones who are going to get locked down. Nobody leads by example. 
far from it. You had that, uh, my favorite, I think it was the mayor of Austin, Texas, who actually filmed his holiday message to the citizens of Austin to stay home and not go out and celebrate from his timeshare in Mexico. What, Cabo? I mean, <laughs> this is just the height of hypocrisy. I mean, th this is the crap that goes on. And we see it over and over and over with these people. And it's just, it, it, it's just so annoying. It's so unnerving. They're delegitimizing themselves. You know, I often say, and other, I'm not alone in this, people say that progressives, once they get their hands on an institution, they destroy it. You know, they get their hands on education, they destroy it. They get their hands on the military, they'll destroy that. They get their hands on the media, they destroy media. They delegitimize everything they touch. Now they're in the process of delegitimizing American politicians. They're delegitimizing government over this COVID stuff. That's what's happening. And when government itself is delegitimized, as I've asked before, why are we still a nation? Why are we still a nation? The bottom line here is, you know, science is science. Public policy is public policy. You can, you can use science, but you have to find a way, and it's a difficult thing to do, to apply science in public policy. Because it's not that simple. Science tells you, okay, you shouldn't shake hands. But what do you, so the wrestlers don't shake hands, but they can wrestle? Science tells you that outdoor dining is a risk. But other people can outdoor dine and other people can't? And the problem isn't the science. The problem is the application of science by politicians. And politicians don't do a good job of that. And I think this is the crucial point, and it's all about being an American. Our government, our style of government, our republic, is based on the assumption that when you make policy, you make decisions, you pass laws, you should trust the people. If you're not willing to trust the people, then you're setting up a government that's run by aristocrats, bureaucrats, technocrats, whatever you want to call them, the intelligentsia, the nomenclatura, the apparatchiks. If you want that style of government, fine. But the American style of government is to trust the people. And that would be, I believe, and I truly believe this, the best way to handle this COVID-19 epidemic would be to trust the people. Let them decide if they want to wear a mask. Let them decide when they go out. Now, there will be people who will make mistakes. People will die. People die all the time. We're all going to die. It's part of the cost of life. You know, people get killed along the way, and eventually we'll all go. Any public policy has a flip side to it. What, do we want to live in that kind of world where the government tells us what to do about everything? Would it be a better world? Can they really do a better job? Do they have better intelligence than our collective intelligence? People on the left are always talking about diversity. Diversity this, diversity that. Biden's cabinet's got to be diverse. This institution has to be diverse. This corporation has to be diverse. The greatest form of diversity is the marketplace, the global marketplace. You got what, 8 billion people making individual decisions. What's more diverse than that? The, a great form of diversity in this country would be let the 350 million people in this country make their own decisions about COVID-19. What's more diverse about that? Instead of having a mayor or a governor or a governor and a mayor making the decisions for us. Let the citizens of California make their own decisions. Will they make mistakes? Sure. 
Some will. But has Mayor Garcetti made mistakes? He sure as hell has. Has the Governor Newsom made mistakes? He sure as hell has. Has Dr. Fauci made mistakes? He sure as hell has. Show me an expert. Show me a scientist. Show me a politician who hasn't gotten something wrong. Donald Trump has got things wrong. Nancy Pelosi has gotten things wrong. Cuomo's gotten things wrong. At least he got an Emmy. Trump didn't get anything. Trust. You know, let's talk diversity. Diversity. Let people make their own decisions. It's that simple. Reason. Left hand. Faith. The right hand of the soul. Trust. Place your faith in the American people. I'm not talking about faith in a religion. I'm not talking about faith in Trumpism or socialism or progressivism. I'm talking about faith in the 350 million people in this country. Nothing is more diverse than trusting 350 million people to make their own best decisions. It's that simple. That's what we need to do. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos, subscribe to the channel, and until the next time, keep fighting.